So thank you all for attending this buff session called Bash the Kernel Maintainers. Um, I'm going to make a quick announcement first. There's going to be no slides for this talk. Okay? So <laughs> I feel very ashamed not to have submitted my slides by the Friday deadline, so I decided to go without slides in the end. Um, so to avoid troubling you with uh, anything visual, that's going to be the background we'll have. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, yeah, I can do that. Absolutely. <laughs> um, okay. So I'd like to set the goals for this, uh, for this session. The first goal is that I want you to speak and not listen to me. So we'll see how that works. If I'm the one doing the talking, it's going to be kind of a failure, uh, even though I've prepared a few topics that I can use to start a conversation. Um, this is about rep reporting problems you might or probably uh, have experience when doing Linux kernel development and trying to get patches upstream or interacted with the Linux kernel community. Um, this is not about calling people na people's names, so there's no need, unless you want to, uh, to state the name of a particular maintainer that you would like to bash. I'm more interested in having feedback of what doesn't work, of the problems you have encountered, and discussing possible solutions. So the, uh, hopefully the outcome of this session will be um, a summary of all kind of problems you will have encountered, un encountered uh, discussion, uh, solutions we, uh, we will have discussed, but it's really about a problem summary. I plan to uh, <coughs> then ma make, well, make a summary of that that I will try to anonymize as best as possible, so you please feel free to speak out. I won't quote your name. This doesn't mean that you're anonymous in this room. You might notice there are a few people around you. Uh, so if you decide to speak out, obviously I can't guarantee that nobody will remember when they step out of the door. Uh, <laughs> but it's not going to be recorded by me. Could be recorded on video, though. Um, OK. <laughs> uh, I'm also going to make a readout of the session at the Kernel Maintainer Summit uh, later this week. Uh, and again, I won't quote any name during, uh, during that presentation. Right. Um, the format for this, what I would like to do is to start with discussing problems first, because I know that lots of you have a lot of ideas on how we can improve the process, but I would like the possible solutions that we discuss to be based on actual problems that people experience. So if you have a problem, please report it. If you think of solutions for your problem, or if you think for solution for, for, for a problem that someone has reported, let's discuss that. But if you have a solution for something that, well, you think might be a problem, but that you haven't experienced yourself, or don't know anyone who has who have experienced that, that's a bit of low interest for in the context of this session. So I have a single microphone here that hopefully should work. Might need to push a button somewhere. Yeah, that works. So does anyone want to start? Yes, thank you. <laughs> there is a bit of an opaque world as to what the expectations are for various parts of the kernel and various maintainers. Each maintainer has their own way of accepting or rejecting patches and notifying people of that. Um, what their time frame is, some um, maintainers, you have to comment on patches that are there going to them within a week or two or you have no chance to reject them or say they should be different. Other maintainers you could expect a month or two before the patch actually goes in. So it's more a matter of documentation of what these practices are by area or by right. maintainer. Right. Um, that's actually something I had in, uh, in the, the, the notes I, I prepared in case nobody had, uh, had any questions wanted to start. So yeah, the, f the first part that you mentioned is uh, a time issue. What's the deadline? Uh, it goes both ways. Uh, how long do you have if there's a patch that's being sent to a mailing list and you want to review that? Well, well my, my issue isn't the timing. My issue is knowing what the timing is for each knowing maintainer. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes, indeed the time dif differs between different maintainers and different subsystems. I think that's pretty much a given. I don't really think we'll have a big influence on that because we have a very uh, diverse style of, of maintainers and maintenance ship. Uh, we have people who pay to work full time on maintaining a subsystem. We have people doing that as a, as a hobby. Um, 
I think we should strive to improve the process, to improve the community, to possible, possibly move, that's another topic that we might mention, to a group maintenance, for instance, to try to make things faster and smoother. Uh, but I don't think that setting, indeed, a timeline, a deadline that works for everybody will, will be one thing. But do documenting that, yes, yep. uh, that's something we can do. So we can't really... Uh, we can't really enforce the amount of time, but documenting it is probably something that's useful, yes. Uh, is there anyone in this room who is a new kernel contributor uh, who has uh, submitted just a few patches from time, time to time and who was unsure whether the patches were correctly received, it was lack of feedback, not knowing when to ping the maintainer, whether it was appropriate to do that? Yeah, I see a hand over there. Okay. Um, Yep, thank you. I need to stand up. <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm really not a big submitter. I probably have six or seven patch and that's Perfect, it. you're the perfect target for this talk. And you know, when you get it right, you know, we do little patches very often, a one-liner, a two-liner, a mathematical function that you just change. So most of the time those patches are right, actually, and it's a black hole, nobody says anything. And you actually learn in the next release, six months later or three months later, depending where you are, that they got merged. But uh, yeah, there's no feedback. Okay. Um, so on that topic, documentation is indeed one of them for the delays. But that doesn't really solve the black hole problem. It doesn't really solve the fact that you don't know whether your patch has been accepted or not. Um, and I believe, I mean, been doing kernel development for quite a long time, so I have absolutely no issue going to maintainer and say, what's going on? Uh, but I assume that's a bit more difficult for newcomers. Um, and that's, that's one issue that I, uh, that I also have uh, identified indeed. Um, so documentation, one of them. And how could we improve this black hole problem? Um, anyone has suffered from the same issue? Yes, right over there. Do you want the microphone? <laughs> well, I, I have a sort of similar problem with submitting patches when you're doing work for a client and you say, okay, I've got a few patches for just general fixes that the client is never going to complain about, so you send them off they don't get looked at or they get looked at late and by the time they are even reviewed, you've moved on to a different piece of work and you don't have time or you don't have the hardware to go back and look at these. I think that's another, another problem is that, is there some way of getting somebody else who could look at that or? Yeah, I think that largely depends on what kind of patches you're sending, uh, what subsystem possibly as well. Uh, if you're sending a few cleanups or general patches for a very specific driver uh, that has very few developers or users, there's a high chance indeed that if you don't do the work, nobody's going to pick it up. Uh, if you send patches for core code of a subsystem, there could be a higher chance that someone could say, okay, this patch has been sent, it hasn't pick, been picked up, it has been reviewed, changes were requested, but the, the submitter lost interest or had to move to something else, doesn't have time. Uh, so in some cases, we could probably do s something about that, but it requires actually people to go over the mailing list, uh, possibly using tools like Patchwork or other ones, to, uh, to, to pick those patches up and try to get them upstream. Um, that could be an interesting junior job for, like we have lots of uh, newcomers to kernel development going through kernel newbies, we have uh, Art Ricci, uh, people were starting working on the kernel and there's been lots of complaints before of uh, maintainers who are not happy to receive check patch uh, style patches uh, out of the Art Ricci program. So, yes. We're not supposed to be talking about solutions first, okay, so you are, yeah, well, you are kind well, of you know, doing what you said. No, no, no. I, I, I said I want to <laughs> talk about a solution if there's no problem first. <laughs> yeah, okay. But, if but, <laughs> but just to finish that, and then I'll move to Hans, who got a microphone. Uh, it would could be an option, for instance, for a program like Ricci to instead of 
running check patch to go to mailing list and try to see what patches have been sent, got reviewed, but never had never got a V2 and try to get a V2 of that. Yeah? But, but I think that one thing I heard is that uh, they might not even have hardware by the time. So that's yes. uh, that would be even if somebody picks it up. No, That's absolutely. Uh, I totally agree with that. Uh, if there's no hardware availability, you can't test that. But I don't think that all patches would fall in that category. I'm sure that some of them would apply to car sub subsystem code, for instance. Um, and I, I think the important part, uh, if, if you have post patches and you know you are losing access to your hardware in the next month, tell us. We don't know, right? But if you tell me, if you send me an email, hey, uh, uh, what about these patches? I'm, I'm, I can now I still have the hardware in the months I don't have it, then I will prioritize them. Otherwise, they go on the, the big pile and every so often you go through them and you process all the patches. And Because if I don't know that you lose access to the hardware, I can't prioritize. So it's we are not telepathic, luckily, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> if you don't tell us, we we don't know. Uh, we we're not. I, I generally, I think is if you post a patch and you don't hear anything about it. Uh, ideally, if you have patchwork, that is great because it, it, I, especially if you can delegate patches to someone, and if you see in patchwork that your patch is delegated, then you know someone will like look at it. Um, and if it's in patchwork, you have a good chance that it won't be forgotten. Forgotten. I really like the tool, but you need to you need to tell us if there is something special about it, and just send an email. What's the worst that can happen that we don't reply? <laughs> um, that, that's actually pr only that only works for the media patches because for everybody else, nobody goes back to old patches and applies them. That's the only subsystem that I've had that I've sent patches to. Didn't hear anything for a year, and then then they got applied. <laughs> Either I hear something within a few months, or they are dead, and I have to resend them. Media is the one subsystem where people actually go back to ancient patches, and then suddenly they're in. <laughs> well, the key thing I heard from Han Hans is I agree with that communication. Um, sometimes what happens in my case is I have I maintain case self test, and then I have bunch of uh, patches come in for tests. And sometimes I, I wait for the uh, test author to review. So yep. I sometimes lose track of them, um, honestly. And then I really appreciate that somebody pings me and I get back to them. So communication, just don't hesitate. Saying, politely pinging, and yep. in saying what's happening. So. But not every week, otherwise other people will get irritated with you. <laughs> yeah, and that goes back to documenting the, 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 the time scale. Uh, some maintainers, I mean, Mark, you mentioned that you don't want to be pinged every week. Some maintainers might want to be pinged more frequently than others, so that's something that could be documented as well, yes. So I haven't, haven't seen this happen for a long time, but years ago, I, uh, I would maintain a certain amount of drivers directly, and I'd be doing refactoring on them. Uh, and then someone submits a cleanup patch to LKML and it breaks my series and we kind of submitted at the same time But for some reason since it got all this visibility to LKML it gets priority and that Again hasn't happened in a long time, but it, it's very frustrating that, That's all okay. <laughs> I'm Trying to write it down as well So any other problem you might have encountered? Yes. Just can share my experience. Send patches, wait three months. Pink, got an angry email, wait one year. Pink, <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, it works. <laughs> yes, that's, that's quite long. Um, well, way too long, obviously. Um, I mean, from my my personal experience, I'm not a subsystem maintainer, but I definitely maintain drivers, um, and things fall th through the cracks, uh, depending how busy I am in a given period of time. Um, I mean, just on a side note, you can bash me as well. Maybe that's what you were doing. 
it's nice to not say the name, but <laughs> um, so yes. Um, as Shua mentioned, I appreciate being pinged. Obviously, if you do that every day, I'm gonna s reply politely that okay, please wait one week. Um, but if I haven't reviewed a patch after one month, there's a chance that it did fall through the cracks and that you will not go back to it because it gets buried in my inbox and yeah. Uh, that should not happen in the first place. That's something that I should try to fix. Uh, but you should not hesitate pinging, I believe, at least in my opinion. Uh, there's nothing violent in pinging a maintainer or pinging a reviewer because a patch hasn't gotten any, uh, gotten any feedback. Um, obviously, it depends on the tone of your email. Uh, but as long as people remain polite, I don't think that's a problem at all. Yeah. I definitely would say the same thing for Armsock. Uh, we are sometimes really late in picking up patches. And if, if I get an email saying, well, it's been two weeks, why haven't you applied any of the patches? Uh, that would actually be... Uh, the, th that might actually be enough to get me to, to do all the work <laughs> and not wait another week. Yep. Al although if it has been a long, uh, like a month or something, then maybe just resending rather than just pinging can work better because uh, there is a good chance that the patch has actually gone completely AWOL. So if you do get a reply, it will be, I don't know, please send me the patch again. I don't know what this is. And again, that's that's different per maintainer. So for us, a ping would be better than a resend. Oh, you're, you're for you, pull, yeah, you're doing we we are doing pull request. It's, so it's also time dependent. It's also time dependent. I mean, it's a situation thing. But consider resending, uh, not just pinging. Yeah. So if it, if there's been a merge window in between, please do resend. Yeah, if it's a really long time, obviously, uh, if it has been three, four, five kernel releases, uh, the patch might not apply anymore. So if that's the case, it's indeed, I think, better to do uh, to uh, to resend it. So moving on to a somewhat different topic here. Yes. Oh, thank you. Um, so we've been talking mainly about patches being forgotten, yep. but there are other uh, cases where you submit a patches solving a specific problem that you have. The maintainer is not really happy with the solution you're proposing, but does not make any other proposal that you can like um, uh, use to rework your patches or make uh, a better a better proposal. And mm. things stay as they are. You still have your problem. Nothing gets merged, and that can stay this way for months without uh, the thing moving forward. The maintainer doesn't make up his mind on, on how to solve that problem. The problem is still there. Nobody has came up with a better solution, so, and it stayed there forever. I think that's actually a very common problem. Um, I've seen that myself being on actually both sides. Um, personally, when I review patches and see something I don't like, I try to at least give a direction that could be uh, that could be experimented. Um, I don't know if it happens to, happen to anyone in this room that you get a patch, a patch series and you review that and say, okay, that's not right. But I'm not really sure why, but I really feel it's not right. <laughs> okay, good, it's not I just me. Yeah, th that, that feeling from a maintainer is fine, but um, what you what you expect as a contributor is some kind of okay that's the direction and there are some maintainers that don't basically drive their subsystem they're just taking patches but as as soon as there is a problem that is a little bit um, requires more reflection more thinking um, well there's no m nobody uh, that really drives the subsystem and tells okay that's the way I want to follow to to solve that specific problem and so the problem remains open forever. Right. And some of the problems are really hard. And you, as the maintainer, you don't know the solution. And as the mm. contributor, you don't know it either. You really have to get in the room, possibly with three other people, and find a solution. And that's fundamentally a hard thing. Um, the best solution for these things is come to a conference and schedule a meeting. <laughs> but not all of those are hard. I mean, sometimes it's really just the maintainer being lazy and hoping the the person goes away and <laughs> does something <laughs> else. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, and I hope that the outcome of this session will be that we'll try to keep people in, devel in the development okay. community. So they would just, if they are lazy, they would just take the patches and apply them. Wouldn't they? That's too much work. <laughs> 
<laughs> of course, it's always easier to apply a patch than to reject it. But if you know it's wrong, then yeah. you yeah. know it's going to come back to you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know it's going to come back to you and that it's going to be much lots of work later. Uh, trying to get it in staging might be an option sometimes. Yes. <laughs> So if the problem is, depending on the problem, right, if that, if that is like a very isolated one where, where there's only one person complaining, um, it may not appear as a, you know, as an important thing, right? But then if, so my approach would be to just make it more apparent, like, <laughs> you know, find somebody else who has this problem and so on and, uh, and then try to appear Try to make it appear as a common one. Um, yep. Yeah, but I'm, I'm sure you can understand that it's frustrating if you have well an actual yeah, problem that takes sure months to yep. build a community that has the same problem and fight against, basically fight against the maintainer to prove that the problem really exists on multiple platforms or multiple s situations. That that's can be very frustrating for sometimes problems that are not that complicated. Not that complicated, it's going to be a bit of a gray area sometimes, but yes. And we still don't have DT overlays. Or, <laughs> or request API. <laughs> I don't want to depress people. <laughs> okay. Any other topic? Any other problem? I can't believe that the... Okay. Please. Yeah, I just wanted to add something. Uh, compared to what Thomas was saying. Uh, yes. So one of the things is when the maintainer doesn't give a clear view of where how we are supposed to fix things, but also in my uh, developer hat this time, um, one of the things that really frustrates me is that when you have a quite simple solution that looks reasonable, but maybe not to the maintainer, which is like totally fine, and then the actual solution is several order of magnitude, more complicated and involve much more time. And so basically in this case, I would, most of the time I'm just like giving up and I'm not fixing actually the problem because it's, I'm just not going to do it. Right. Um, so yeah, that's one of the issues as well, I guess. Yeah, I've seen that in it a few times before where you submit a small fix to something and then you get told, yeah, but can't you fix the whole world? I've I've done that. Like uh, yes, people have s sent me very simple patches that were just wrong. And then we we're trying to figure out how to do it right, and end up getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and ending up the whole subsystem. Um, in the end, sometimes it's actually better to have that have merged that hack in the first place. That's a lazy approach. But um, and of course, sometimes all it takes is for the person to go. Um, no, actually, I really don't have time, and you'll apply the patch anyway. Yep. Yeah, possibly having a middle ground solution where you can say, okay, that's the hack, the best solution would be that, but maybe you can c come up with the partial solution that's a bit less hackish than the first one. Yeah, so I just want to shim in on this as well. I mean, if I send a patch, and then some of the core developers in the subsystem say that, oh yeah, I see what you did there, but you should implement it in this way, and then you send your V2, and at that point, another core developer from the same subsystem steps in and says, yeah, I see what you did there, but you should do it the way you did it the first time. And then you <laughs> just have to <laughs> iterate it all over again. <laughs> I've seen that recently, yes. Rings a bell, thank you. Yes, I, I, I also have seen those before. And it gets worse when you have five maintainers coming up with seven solutions. <laughs> yep. So ho how could we improve that? Ricardo? <laughs> um, yeah, so sometimes you have to send a patch uh, yep. that is going to affect some area that is not of your expertise. Or, for example, you need to change, a, uh, you want to make an IOCDL that is one in one architecture, that IOCDL have to be in all the architectures, and you cannot cross compile for all those architectures easily in your computer. Or there are some tests that you cannot run your computer uh, because you don't have the static analyzer that, you don't have a, a proprietary static analyzer that the one that runs a kernel every week. So yeah, it will be nice to have something that automatically checks 
that you voluntarily send to uh, like a demon or like a uh, bot that you that will check your patch against all the Cosinel, against uh, all the static analyzers, and all the architectures before you send it to the uh, to the maintainers, just to make sure they are not going to call you stupid when you send it, <laughs> because it's a stupid. Well, they should never call you stupid in the first place. They, ah. might, they, they can certainly say the code that you, the patch that you have sent is not right for these reasons, but sh they should never call you stupid. But actually, so recently, that may not be known to everybody, but uh, there is a uh, zero-day um, ser service that actually, uh, if you post a patch to say uh, the LKML, uh, it will just pick it up, apply it, compile it, and complain. If it doesn't, and send a fix to you. So yeah, this and actually it runs a, 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 an array of static analyzers and things and so on, and even sometimes boot tries to boot it on some hardware. So yeah, that. So you want to send it privately because you're scared of losing no. face if you send it publicly. Is that? But I, I, I think that's an attitude problem that we might have then among maintainers in the community. Because whatever you send to a mailing list, you, you should not lose face. Nobody should call you stupid. Um, and you sh and it's I'm not saying it's wrong that you have a feeling in the first place, but if you have that feeling in the first place, then there's something that we need to fix. We don't want to have an abusive behavior uh, as maintainers. Yes? Microphone. Oh, oh, I okay. was just going to um, add to what uh, Rafael said. Uh, sometimes I don't even, I even if I don't send, zero days is very aggressive in some ways. Yep. I just upload it to a um, to one of my gits that I use, and it just pulls it in. <laughs> so um, I haven't even sent it to the mailing list, which is good actually. I ca I kind of like that. I sometimes do that. Yes. But to catch to catch stuff. Yes. So. So you're absolutely right that um, we should be building a positive kernel community and abuse should never be tolerated. But there is something to be said for making maintainers' lives easier for the simple checking of the examples oh yeah, cross compiling. Absolutely. So I think um, maybe it, it is sufficient to to have a just a test at um, LKML or something where you can just ha send say send your patches here. They'll churn through the CI and nobody ever has to look at them, and you'll eventually either get back a report or nothing. So it's, it's not even the fact about um, saving face. I'd probably say it's more making sure the maintainer doesn't actually try start to do the review right. until it's done the okay. bare minimum of stuff. So that could yeah. be an example. Yeah, it's to basically lowering your traffic in the mailing list so that humans who have less CPU time than the computers wouldn't be bothered with that. The only issue I have with that is that if you send a if you send a patch like that to uh, to a bot and get a report saying that there's lots of front of you patch, well, newcomers might say, okay, I can't refix really that myself. I won't bother. Uh, it's too hard. While if they send it publicly, they could be given a review, and e even if they decide to give up, there could be someone picking up the patch or picking up the fix if it's an interesting one. Um, so having it, having it in the open in the first place also has some value. Now what the balance between the two is, I can't really tell, um, but that's my opinion at least. Uh, yep. Two things. Uh, there are some maintainers very high up who are certainly not nice to newcomers. Yes. And uh, we all know that. <laughs> yes, we do. Secondly, for the sending patches to for automated testing. We have a tag like RFC, RFT, having one just say, one which just means, I'm not sure of this patch, please automate it, automatically test it, otherwise look at it, might be worthwhile. Yep. Yeah, that's a good idea. It would be public, would be stored in mailing list archives, but maintainers could definitely uh, skip over that. Yep. Yep. But if you send a patch to this automatic tester and, and when you get the result, you don't know how to fix it, you can send it to kernel newbies instead of sending it to LKLIM or the, or the mailing. And it's your decision. You, you can do that, yes. But my point was that newcomers might not do it. Uh, again, maybe I'm worrying about something that is not prone in practice because we don't have that infrastructure in the first place. Um, Over here. Uh, 
I was just going to say that um, that automated bot system might actually encourage newcomers. So it might give them a way to have an in. So That's might true be worthwhile. Too. Yes, yes. It would put lower the barrier to entry. People might be less scared to contribute. So that's a good point as well. I also wonder wh whether we should be doing more to call out aggressive behavior. Like sometimes I notice a developer or a maintainer replying to a patch in an inappropriate way. But then I also don't feel like I should step up because then I know that person is going to come after me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think it's our responsibility collectively yeah. to do that. I mean, everybody is responsible for the whole community in this case yeah. because otherwise nobody does it. Uh, and I think that if you call out that kind of behavior and that person comes after you, you'll get lots of support. That's probably true. Yeah. Yeah. I don't expect newcomers to do that, no. but certainly kernel, kernel developers <laughs> And that can not only be extended to replies to patches, but sometimes commit messages fixing bugs also contain pretty uh, aggressive language, like uh, how could could have been done that before so stupidly. And uh, I think also this is very, uh, that, that's not appropriate. But some people might be smarter and some people who did it before might be in a hurry or whatever, but they probably did not do this intentionally bad. Yes, that's a good point. Uh, as a relatively new contributor, I can tell that even if you don't have a face initially, you always are afraid of losing that. So I'm sending something that is stupid to someone. So sometimes you uh, refrain from doing that. So I don't know if there's something that it's a problem that is general or personal or uh, widespread, but I think that's something that helps like, uh, this is my first patch, I have a look at that like a tag or something, and or run then through automatic test infrastructure or something, could help people getting more confident in sending patches probably. Well, to answer your first question there, who here wasn't scared when sending the first patch to the kernel? <laughs> <laughs> so it's probably <laughs> general, yeah. I wasn't really scared, but the patches were really, really bad. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yep, Raphael. Yeah. <coughs> but yeah, I think that the problem of confidence for newcomers is oh. an important one. So a comment on, on, on sending a first patch. So if you tag it as RFC, which means or stands for a uh, request for comments, then yeah, then prob probably, so, so first of all, maintainers are not very likely to look at that. And second, well uh, you, uh, you, you, will, you, you might actually get some more like, uh, you know, warm reception for that because people will treat it as experimental code, essentially. And experimental code might be, you know, bad or something. Yes, Nobody will well it's expected to be bad. It, it's expected that way, yeah. Um, our model is based on sending patches to mailing lists. Yep. And we have jobs, and we work with GitHub, and we send pull requests, and there's CI and gives us a green check mark. As a maintainer, I wish that my job reviewing patches coming in could be as easy as looking at a graphical UI, seeing the check mark, and then reviewing the code. I wish. I don't know that that's the best thing, but it's something I miss uh, when I go back to Linux open source work after I leave GitHub all day long. You know, it's just it's great having that CI, and we just. Uh, Basically, newcomers, um, they, they don't feel comfortable sending pull requests. And I don't really think any, any newcomers do. And it, it could actually probably make the maintainers not. work the maintainers easier. Maintainers would probably not, not really accept that in most cases either. Many won't. Um, but that's, uh, I'm talking about the trend. We haven't yes. moved forward. We've been, it's been patches on a mailing list for the past many years. Yes. It, that's it a topic that has been discussed quite extensively, actually, over the past year or couple of years. Yeah. Um, I mean, my personal experience with UIs for that is that, yes, you'll have a nice graphical UI with a button that you can press after you finish the review, uh, and most of the time you'll press the button without reviewing it. Uh, don't get me started in Garrett, for instance. Um, sorry? Yeah. We can probably improve tooling. 
put a complete change like that, well, that would be very disruptive, and I'm not sure what the outcome would be, whether it would be a better place or not, but that's something that's open. So yep. Yeah, yeah. Zero did does give you some level of CI, and there's been lots of efforts recently to improve CI in the kernel in general. And people at Belibre, for instance, have been working on extending kernel CI to do more than boot testing. Uh, and I think that's a trend in the Linux kernel community at the moment uh, that we're really trying to improve the test infrastructures, to improve CI, uh, and well, to improve the quality in the end of the product. Yeah. Yeah. Here. Where's the microphone? <laughs> yes, oh. Okay. Okay. Um, Thank you. So, just first to go back to what was discussed about uh, people sending things and not being sure it's correct somehow. Um, I mean, I don't even like to get a nasty message from the zero day bot. I mean, it's like oh, you forgot to compile. You. I mean, even if it's not human, it's still sort of a reproach. Um, yes, so if it says, "Have you forgotten <laughs> to compile?" That m that's no, I mean, it's not harsh. the phrasing. It's just yes. the fact that the message comes. It okay. One might prefer to have control over when this detection happens and, and so on. It's, it's like right. once you've sent it off, somehow you have justified that you feel like it's good enough, and then getting it back is a bit unnerving. Do um, so you think that for newcomers, it would be better to have a human who can use a softer tone uh, yes, to guide people right. instead of having something automated, which by definition is going to be cold. To the contributor only and not sending in the into the mailing list or to the subsystem maintainers as well. Yeah, so I don't know if that was clear, but um, there was a suggestion that maybe it would only go to the message would only go to the contributor and not to everyone to somehow reduce embarrassment. Um, oh, right. So, so that the zero day report would be private and not go to yeah. the mailing list, for but instance. Laura? I'm not the so actually my question though was about um, cross-tree commits Yes. and I think it's very unclear where they should go and who's going to pick them up and how they should be cut up and, and so on and I think maybe this unclearness uh, discourages sending such changes. Um, so maybe we could have somehow an overall better code quality yes. if this process were more clear. Yes. Uh, how are we doing from a time point of view, by the way? When do I have to stop? Sorry? Sorry? Okay, five o'clock. Okay. Then, well, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> No, I see people are queuing already for next session. So thank you very much for attending. Thank you for the feedback. You've been great.